I'm Jade Raymond, Managing Director of Ubisoft Toronto. Do you kind of miss the days of coming out on, on a stage at E3 and kind of showing off your game? Or do you quite like your new office job, like sat in a glass box? <laughs> well, I still get to talk to you, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> you kind of do. Yeah, yeah. They wheel you out every so often, right? <laughs> well, I wheel myself out. Oh, OK. <laughs> are, you, are you very happy where you are now? Or would you like to go back to the good old days and work on Jeopardy again? Or? <laughs> Yes, I do sometimes miss the days of being a coder. That was pretty cool. The, there's something about being a programmer where you get to be the magician of the industry. You know, no one really understands what you do, and they go, OK, um, can you do this? And you think about it, and you're like, oh, maybe it can be done. Come back in two weeks. And people are like, wow, it works. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, and you know, leading a team in the game industry is really exciting. Being uh, in the producer job, you know, uh, Alex Perezzo, who's leading Splinter Cell Blacklist, is you know has as much experience as me in the industry has shipped a ton of games you know and I learn a lot working with him and he's decided you know instead of going into management staying in the exciting spot where you're shipping games with the team so you know there is there are some people who choose to stay uh, there where all the action is and sometimes you know I do mi I do miss it but <laughs> I get to pretend I'm part of the dev team still <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite nice to to have Ubisoft Toronto and I, I'm sure a lot of people see it as Jade Raymond's studio you know have, is that quite a big big thing for you I hope not I mean <laughs> uh, I you know I think there is kind of a danger because I did become, you know, as you pointed out, I'm well known for Assassin's Creed yeah. and I did become pretty well known for that. Uh, and I guess I stand out a little bit in the game industry. So um, I get more attention than I think I deserve. And I, I hope that doesn't take attention away from the other people in the studio because we do have a phenomenal team. And, you know, I'm doing the kind of business side of things. And so, you know, it's, it's really the rest of the team's talent that's getting to shine on these games. You say uh, you, were, you were seen as the face of Assassin's Creed. Do you think that really helps the, uh, a game franchise? If there was a face throughout the entirety of the Assassin's Creed franchise, do you think you know, it would become a bit more relatable? In a, a well, Assassin's Creed has two faces. There's also Patrice doing at least as much yeah, yeah, we got, yeah, <laughs> talking course, as me. Yeah. So there's a bearded face and a less bearded face. Um, <laughs> I think, um, you know, I think it's always easier as a fan if you can identify with uh, come of the, some of the developers and stuff. And that's not a thing that we typically do in games because it really is a team effort. You know, um, you, you can't. It's not one person's vision in games. What makes a game great is when you have a bunch of people's vision coming to life and everyone building on each other. So it's a bit tough. You know, I think a couple people get to talk about a game, and that does make it maybe easier to relate. But it's not the I think an accurate picture of you know who is in involved in coming up with the ideas and stuff. It's still quite hard for the games industry to kind of break out and be on like Saturday night television. I don't know a, a lot of American uh, Saturday night li live or whatever like. Yeah, well we're not as charming I think as uh, the actors. <laughs> we have to work on that. What, how would you see the industry will be seen in like say let's say 10 years Let's really throw it, <laughs> throw that question at you. Well, it's, you know, you can see it, you can see it um, every day. There, there used to be gamers, you know, and, yeah. and there were, you know, you, I could say, I, I'm a gamer and yeah. I'm not a gamer. And, you know, there was a small segment of gamers, but now there is no distinction. You know, kids don't say, I'm a gamer, I'm not a gamer. Playing games is just something people do, just like watching movies and listening to music and stuff. It's like kids, you know, they just play games all the time it's uh, they're on tablets they don't have to pay they're on you know they're on their phone because all kids have phones these days they're playing games they're playing that on PC they're paying playing games like Just Dance you know it's sort of um, pervasive and I think with all the new platforms and new business models and stuff like that it's going to continue to grow um, so I don't think they're really yes it, we could see things changing already it's no longer a niche medium for sure well thank you ever so much for your time Jay. thank you Hopefully we'll see, they'll wheel you out again sometime. <laughs> <laughs>